So in your in your opinion, what ways are the modern schooling system failing us? And how is this new form of schooling, or maybe it's not new, but this form of schooling that's really gaining popularity that you're discussing here, how is this really going to uh, be a much more positive shift for those that are uh, maybe, I guess, dil- dis- uh, delus- uh, disillusioned by the modern schooling system today? Yeah, uh, I so I, I went to public school as well, and... Uh, I felt a lot of the same things you did. I took a few uh, pre-AP, AP classes, and that's where I really noticed that something was wrong. Uh, the Specifically, the AP classes, but really it's the whole culture of the school, but it's kind of concentrated in those classes. It's all about uh, competition, all about personal advancement at, you know, at the expense of anyone else who gets in your way. Um, I remember some moments where I would ask friends to help, or you know, people in my class, uh, classes, peers, to um, help me study, or if we could get together and study. And it was like this aversion to any sort of possibly working together with anyone else because you might share some secrets that are needed to help you advance on the, on the tests or whatever. And, uh, it was just the, a lot of this was coming from pressure from parents uh, kids were extremely stressed uh, as parents were you know, I guess a lot of times they feel like their you know, parents sometimes li- want to live on through their children and, and have their um, their dreams come out through their children and so you see this immense pressure on on these children to um to study very very hard for these tests which really don't actually measure so well um what you're really learning um but it's the stress and then it turns into competition and it turns into um this kind of isolation and uh it it it's it seems to be across the board a an environment not allowing for much cooperation um, and really just pitting, pitting students against each other. But if we look at the, the school model, um, you know, schools are still stuck in this kind of factory idea that uh, you know, the, the school model that we have is based on preparing people for um, factory work, to be obedient workers. Um, you know, you see that in the bell system, um, how you have bells timing each class uh, precisely. Um, that's directly based off of kind of the factory uh, model. You have uh, the road desks, the lines with the line leaders, all that kind of stuff. Um, that is just a very outdated way of uh, doing education, but it's also meant to control. It's meant to um, guide students into a certain uh, into a certain channel. And we don't have an industrial economy anymore. Um, of course, the planet does, but in the United States, we've outsourced uh, that elsewhere most for the most part. So most kids, um, you know, are pro- most uh, schools are starting to look a little bit more towards the service economy. But even there. Um, you know, with about half of jobs, I think, are going to be automated in the next 10 to 20 years. And uh, machines learning to replace, we're teaching machines to replace our jobs. Um, I think the traditional schools also, um, they, they, they push this very entrepreneurship uh, idea, this, this very uh, getting ahead of others um, and, you know, uh, constantly looking for the next best thing, even if it means stepping on others. But uh, even then, even those schools um, will not be preparing students for uh, for the world that they were heading towards. Um, and so, the democratic school model, I think, um, well, first off, when you have a school where the students and the teachers democratically decide, or sometimes even with consensus um, decision-making, decide 
how to run everything in their school, um, you kind of have to have a strong community. Because if you know that another kid, uh, any kid, any kid at all has just as much power as you do in the school body to make, in the school meeting to make, um, to shape the school's environment, uh, you depend on each other uh, to, to kind of get what you want from the school. So I have noticed in my time in democratic schools, uh, there tends to be uh, a more cohesive community, tends to be less um, bullying. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but uh, the cliquish behavior, the bullying um, seems to be uh, greatly uh, lessened. And then when you think about democratic schools and any sort of um, alternative model of schools, uh, it's often pushed in the media as kind of an out there fringe. And so you have um, these kids, when they face the outside world, a lot of times, um, you know, their, their education system that, or the way that they uh, learn is kind of ridiculed or not seen as good enough. Um, so they have to kind of band together anyway. Uh, and so I think you, we have a real cooperative culture in the democratic school model that um, is restoring that, that idea of the community. Of, uh, you know, I think really strong communities have to have the participation of all those who are affected by a decision in making that decision. And um, I think when you have no say in what goes on in your community when uh, you, your extent of knowing your neighbors is uh, scurrying inside quickly, uh, maybe waving, but uh, just trying to get in as fast as you can from a long day of work uh, so you don't have to uh, look or say anything to your neighbors. Um, I think that that's the kind of environment where, yeah, like you said, uh, you probably aren't going to care as much what happens to uh, these people. And um, when you're feeling isolated and you mix in um, this kind of entitlement that comes with, uh, you know, being uh, a white male in America where you're kind of told at a very young age that these certain things are kind of an entitlement that deserve and as we see across the board um, younger generations are noticing that uh, they're for the first time going to have a worse quality of life than their parents they feel like they missed out on this and um, you mix that in with a lack of community and uh, not a real stake in the people around you and you can see how some of this violence uh, makes um, you know it's it's not uh, the, there's not a, a message popping up in as many people's brains that, you know, this is something you don't do. You don't um, go out and harm massive amounts of people like that.